Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part two of my tutorial series on how to create real-time applications using Firebase. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, we're going to start in our main activity and the first thing we do with any Firebase application in Android is to set the Firebase Android context and we do that by saying uh, firebase.set android context and we just type in this since this is the activity that we'll be using. So let's get the link to our Firebase database and what we need to do is just log into Firebase, go to your dashboard and select your project. Up at the top here, we're just gonna go ahead and copy this link, go back to Android Studio and create a private static final string Firebase URL and we make that equal to what we just copied the link to our database and then what we can do is we can actually tell firebase to connect uh, to that database by saying or creating a new variable one more um, uh, private firebase and we'll just call this firebase reference wow can't type Firebase reference, there we go. And then right below, after we set our context, we'll say Firebase reference equals new Firebase. And then we'll just give it our Firebase URL. So that will connect our local Firebase client uh, to our Firebase database. Now what I wanna do is create a new class that represents the data that we're going to be sending and receiving from our database. In this case, that data is going to represent a text message. And what does a text message have? It has an author and it has a message. So we need to create a class that Firebase can serialize and and deserialize the data from uh, during transfer. So we can package it up in this class before we send it off to Firebase, and then when we receive data back uh, from uh, the Firebase server, we can deserialize the data that gets sent into some sort of Java class that we can read from uh, on our local client. So let's go ahead and create a new Java class, and we're gonna call it chat message. And this message is going to have a private string author and a private string message. And it is very critical that every uh, representation of data that you use for Firebase has a uh, blank constructor. So let's create that now. Uh, public uh, chat message. And it takes in nothing and we're going to leave that blank, but we can create other constructors as well. So let's go ahead and do a public chat message that takes in a string that's a string author and a string message. And we'll say this dot message equals message and this dot string, sorry, author equals author. And then we need to uh, generate two um, getters for our data. And this is required by Firebase to serialize and deserialize. So there we go, a representation of the data that we'll be sending and receiving from Firebase. So let's go ahead and go back to our main activity and set up some event listeners for when a user uh, sends a message. And the first thing we need to do is set up an event listener for when they hit the enter button after typing in a message. And then we'll do one for when they actually hit the send button itself. So let's go ahead and get a reference to our edit text uh, box itself. So uh, edit text and we'll just call this input uh, text and oops we need to make sure we bring in edit text and then let's get a reference to it by saying font or we'll do a typecast it to edit text and then we'll do find view by id in our case the id is r dot id dot message text now let's go ahead and add the event listener to that so input text dot um set on editor action listener and we'll create a new text view dot uh, on editor action listener and then we need to uh, there we go we will say when somebody hits the uh, send button first we need to check if it was actually a send ID so we'll say if 
um, action ID equals editor info dot IME action send. So if it's a send uh, request, uh, then what we want to do is just execute the, met uh, the method send message and we'll create that here soon. And then we'll always just return true here. Now let's set up the action for when they actually hit the visible image button send. So let's get a reference to uh, our send button. So we'll do a find view by ID r dot ID dot send a button. And then we'll say set on click listener to a new view dot on click listener. We'll let that hopefully there we go. So we can execute when something when the button is actually clicked. We want to send a message. Now we just need to create that method. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's create a new method a public void send message. First thing we need to do is get a reference to the text field itself so we can get the message from it. So edit text and we'll just call this text uh, input and we'll get make that equal to a typecasted edit text. Find view by ID r dot ID dot message text. Now let's get the string from it. So we'll call this message equals text input a dot a get text a dot to string. Now we need to check and see if that message actually has any content to it. So let's say if uh, the message dot equals if it's blank and then uh, if it's not blank then we can go ahead and send something. So we also need to create a username. In our case for just specifically this tutorial we're going to just generate a random username uh, for demo purposes. So let's create a new random um, rand equals new random and we'll say string dot author or string author equals uh, test user plus uh, rand dot next int and just give it I don't know a thousand or something like that then we'll create a new chat chat message called C message and we'll say that equals new chat message and we'll pass it in our author so author and pass it in our message. So now we just need to send our message to the Firebase database and you are going to love how simple this is. All we're going to do is say Firebase reference a dot push. This creates a new um, object inside the array with a specific identifier, a unique identifier. And then we're gonna just say a set uh, value and set it to our C message. And then we can go ahead and say uh, message, or no, we'll say uh, text input dot set text. And we'll just blank that out. So now all we need to do to test this application is make sure our application has access to the internet and we need to go to the Android manifest.xml file to add this permission. And all we'll do is say, um, uses permission. Um, we want the internet permission. There we go. And we can just do right there. So I'm actually going to test this on my actual Android device now. I'm going to type in hello world and we're going to actually click on the send button at the image of the button and we see that it gets uploaded or sent directly to our Firebase database. You see the author is test user 47 and the message is hello world. Now let's do another message where we use the enter key or the send key on the actual keyboard. See if that works correctly. We hit that. Of course, we get it gets pushed to the Firebase database. We get a new test user 86 author, and this is uh, with the enter button as our message, and we totally did it. Two thumbs up, guys.
So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we just basically were able to send data from our client to the server. Now in the next tutorial, we'll talk about receiving that data and putting it into a list view on our client in the next video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. If you like the video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe, but most importantly, please share it if you did like it. Uh, I'm trying to grow this channel and you guys have been an amazing help. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. I appreciate everybody watching and I'll catch you guys next time.